Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the first lecture on engineering mathematics. I am Jitendra Kumar from the Department of Mathematics and today we will be discussing uh, the Rho's theorem from differential calculus of variable 1. So these are the topics we will be covering today. So starting with the Rho's theorem and since it is a very fundamental theorem, so we will also go through the uh, detailed proof because this will be used for various other results in, 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 in other lectures and then some worked examples. So, what is Rho's theorem? So, Rho's theorem if a function f of single variable is continuous in closed interval a b and differentiable in open interval a b and there is a one more condition which says that the function value at a is equal to the function value at the point p. So, the two end points the function is taking same value. In that case the theorem says that there exists a number c in open interval a b such that f c is equal to 0 meaning that there will be a point C where the slope of the tangent will be 0. So, if we go through the uh, geometrical interpretation, so let us consider this is the function which is plotted in this x axis and the y axis here. So, this is the point at A, so the function value at this point A is here and the same value the function is taking at B. So, the function is continuous and differentiable everywhere then this theorem says that there will be at least one point where the derivative will vanish or the tangent will be parallel to x axis. So, the slope of the tangent is 0 meaning it is parallel to the x axis. So, clearly we can observe that there is a point here somewhere next to this a where the tangent is parallel to the x axis. Indeed, in this situation there are more points one I can see here where the tangent is again parallel to the x axis and there is another point where the tangent is parallel to the x axis. But the theorem says that there will be at least one point where the tangent will be parallel to the x axis. So, in this particular situation we are getting more than one point where the tangent is parallel to the x axis. So, if we go through now the proof which is pretty simple, so let us uh, go step by step. So, here we assume that the function uh, takes the maximum and the minimum value and they are denoted by big M as maximum and small m as minimum in this interval a b which is guaranteed due to the extreme uh, value theorem because the function is continuous in the closed interval and therefore, uh, maximum and minimum will uh, be reached in this interval at some point. So, now we consider the following situation uh, a particular situation the case 1 when m is equal to small m. So, the maximum value is equal to the minimum value. Now, think about the situation then the uh, where the function is uh, having maximum and the minimum value as same. So, in this situation clearly there is no change in the function value and therefore, the minimum value is equal to the maximum value. So, basically if we plot this it is a constant function and that would be the situation when the many minimum value will be equal to the maximum value. So, in this particular case f x is a constant function and since f x is a constant function naturally whatever point you take the derivative is going to be 0. So, the theorem is proved in this case when m is equal to small m. So, the maximum is equal to the minimum the function value. Uh, 
so now the second case when the maximum value of the function is not equal to the minimum value of the function. So, in this case we will consider three uh, situations or three cases again. The first one let us assume that the maximum value in this uh, situation here which is clearly uh, can be observed that it is different than the function value at a and b. The function value at a and b are equal as per the assumptions of the uh, theorem. So, here we assume that the function the maximum value of the function is different than the function value at a and b. The second case when we take the minimum value is different than the function value at a and b and the third situation that for some functions both may be different. So, in this case the minimum uh, or rather I would say the local minimum in each case or local maximum. So, which is here and this is different than the equal values at a and b and here as well the, the local these two local maxima are also different than the equal value at a and b. So, both are different in this case. So, in either situation let us consider the case we suppose that the maximum value of the function is different from the equal values of f at a and b which are the same here. So, the m is different the big m the maximum is different similarly we will consider later on if m is not different then the small m should be different at least one of them will be different because m is not equal to small m. So, we take that the function is taking this value m at a point c. So, f c is equal to m the function is having this local maximum at the point c. So, if this f c is the local maximum then we have f c plus delta x minus f c just consider this situation f c plus delta x. So, this point here c plus delta x is in the close vicinity of c just assume this delta x is close to uh, 0. So, in that case since f c is the maximum value of the function then f c plus delta x and this difference. So, f c plus delta x will be smaller than this f c because f c is the local maximum. So, in this case there will be a such a delta x definitely because f c is uh, the maximum value that this expression here f c plus delta x minus f c will be less than equal to 0 whether this delta x is positive or delta x is negative that means any point you take in the vicinity of this point c then this difference here f c plus delta x minus f c will be less than equal to 0. And now if I divide this expression here by delta x and if I in the first case I take delta x as positive then the sign of this expression will not change and it will remain as less than equal to 0 if delta x is positive. On the other hand if I take delta x as a negative number then this expression will change the sign and this f c plus delta x minus f c divided by delta x will become greater than equal to 0. And now I will take in this first case when I have taken here the delta x positive the limit that delta x goes to 0 and this expression the right and the less than 0. So, if you take a close look at this one this is the right hand derivative of the function f and since f is differentiable this will be equal to the derivative of the function. So, we have here this inequality that the derivative will be less than equal to 0 in this situation. On the other hand when you divide this by delta x which is negative and take the limit again the same similar case here since the function is differentiable that left derivative will be also positive because this inequality is greater than equal to 0. So, in this case we got f prime c is equal to 0 whereas, there we have f prime c less than equal to 0. So, out of these two we conclude that the f prime c has to be 0 because it cannot be less than equal to 0 
or greater than equal to 0 at the same time. So, the only possibility is that f prime c has to be 0. So, in this way we have proved this that there is a point in this interval c in the open interval c where the derivative vanishes. There are few remarks which are of great importance. So, here the hypothesis of the Rose theorem are sufficient, but not necessary for the conclusion. What do we mean by this? So, what we have seen that this continuity of the function in the closed interval a b and the differentiability in the open interval a b and there was a third condition that f a is equal to f b. So, if these three conditions are satisfied, then there will exist a point c where the derivative will vanish. So, these conditions are sufficient meaning that these conditions here all these three conditions implies that f prime c is equal to 0, but not the other way around that f prime c is equal to 0 does not imply that the function will be continuous differentiable and will take these equal values at some points as a and b. So, in other words if all these hypotheses these three hypotheses are met then the conclusion is guaranteed conclusion means the f prime c is 0 that is guaranteed. However, if the hypotheses are not met then you may or may not reach the conclusion which we will see with the help of some examples now. Let us consider this example f x is equal to x square in the range minus 2 to 1 and 3 x minus 2 in the range 1 to 2. So, this function here the clearly if we see uh, that the function is continuous the function value at 1 is here f at 1 which is we can substitute directly the function is defined until 1. So, f 1 is 1 and then if we take the right limit. So, f 1 plus 0 the right limit. So, the limit uh, delta x to 0 and this f 1 plus delta x and minus this f uh, at 1 uh, or just the limit. So, we are not going to get the derivative now. So, this just this expression here f 1 plus delta x and delta x goes to 0 and we take here the delta x positive. So, the right limit of this function as delta x goes to 0. So, this will be simply the limit delta x goes to 0 the delta x we are taking as positive here. And then since delta x is positive 1 plus delta x we will be calculated from this here 3 x minus 2. So, you have the 3 and x means 1 plus delta x the argument and minus 2 and this is nothing but 3 and minus 2 1. So, 1 plus 3 delta x and delta x goes to 0. So, this is 1 and which is equal to the f 1. So, the function is naturally continuous in this case and if we check the differentiability that means the right derivative first. So, the f 1 plus 0 the right derivative means the limit delta x goes to 0 and the delta x is positive. So, f 1 plus delta x minus f 1 and divided by delta x this quotient here. So, in this case the limit delta x goes to 0 the delta x is positive. So, here 1 plus delta x again will be calculated from 3 x minus 2 which we have just done before. So, it was 1 plus 3 delta x was coming and divided by delta x uh, and then here minus this f 1 is 1. So, this gets cancelled and then this value here is nothing but 3. So, the right side derivative of this function is 3 whereas, the left hand derivative so f 1 minus 0 which is a notation and here the limit if you compute delta x goes to 0 delta x negative what will happen to this one. So, here you have the again f 1 plus delta x minus f 1 by delta x, but now this f 1 plus delta x since delta x is negative will be computed from x square. So, meaning we have here uh, delta x goes to 0 and this is 1 plus delta x whole square and minus 1 and divided by delta x. 
So, this one when you expand this there will be 1 plus delta x square plus 2 delta x terms. So, 1 1 will get cancelled and this 2 delta x and divide by delta x will give you uh, 2 and the rest because of the limit will go to 0. So, here the derivative is 2 whereas, there the, right, uh, the left side derivative is 3 and the right side derivative is 2. So, the function is not differentiable in this case and we can plot this one and then again you can see that at this point 1 here the function breaks its differentiability. So, the right side derivative which we have just seen was uh, uh, minus the, the, the left side derivative. So, was 2 and the right side was 3. So, there is a uh, point here where the function is not differentiable. But what is interesting in this case the all the hypotheses are not met because the function is not differentiable at this point. But there is a point here 0 which you can easily compute again from this x square the derivative is 2 x and x is equal to 0 the derivative will become 0. So, here the f prime at 0 is 0. So, the derivative vanishes or the tangent is parallel to the x axis in this case though the function was not differentiable here. So, exactly what we have said if the hypothesis are not met the function may or may not reach the conclusion. So, in this case it is reaching the conclusion, but this is not because of the Rho's theorem. Another example if we take that we have f x is equal to x in the range 0 to 1 and 2 minus x in the range 1 to 2. So, again the similar situation one can easily plot this uh, function and one clearly sees that at this point 1 the function is not differentiable. And in this case we are not getting any point between this 0 and 1 where the function is taking uh, or the derivative is vanishing. So, in this situation f prime x is not equal to 0 at any point in the given interval. So, we have seen these two examples the other one was this one the previous uh, example where the function was not differentiable this is also not differentiable, but in one f prime 0 is equal to 0. So, there is a point where the derivative vanishes whereas, in this case the derivative uh, does not vanish at any point in the interval. So, therefore, the, uh, the uh, these conditions these three hypotheses of the Rose theorem are sufficient conditions and they are not the necessary conditions. So, under those conditions it is guaranteed that the function will uh, the derivative of the function will vanish at at least at one point in the in open interval a b. Another remark that the continuity condition which we have seen the continuity in the closed interval uh, for this uh, function is essential if it is. Uh, uh, not met then we may not uh, that the theorem may not guarantee uh, the uh, existence of such a c where f prime c will be 0. So, for example, if you look at this function f x is equal to x and then 0 at x is equal to 1. So, what do we see here the function is continuous and differentiable on 0 1 and also f 0 is equal to f 1. So, this condition is met differentiability condition is met, but the function is not continuous at 1. We should note that because the function is x from 0 to 1 and then it is x is equal to 1. So, there is a jump here which we can see. So, at x is equal to 1 the function is taking value as 0 and otherwise it is taking here as x. So, the function is not differentiable at oh, sorry continuous at 1. Otherwise, all other conditions are met in this case of the Rose theorem and then we clearly see the derivative is 1 everywhere here uh, between these two 0 and 1 open interval 0 and 1 and therefore, the f prime x is not equal to 0 at any point in this interval x 0 to 1. Another example we will discuss now the applicability of the Rose theorem for this function f x is equal to x square plus 1 in the interval 0 to 1 close interval 0 to 1 and 3 minus x in the interval 1 to 2. So, again if the continuity is, is concerned then the function is continuous because it is taking like f 1 is f 1 is, is 2 and f 
if we take the right limit here f1 plus 0 so the limit delta x goes to 0 and this f1 plus delta x will be uh, this is limit delta x goes to 0 and delta x positive because the right limit we are taking here and in this case this will be 3 minus 1 plus delta x that means uh, it is a 2 uh, minus delta x. So, delta x goes to 0 this is 2 and the value is equal to 1. So, the function is continuous in, in this interval 0 to 2 and what is about the differentiability if we look at the differentiability it is pretty similar to the earlier case. So, if you compute the right derivative so 1 plus 0 that means the delta x goes to 0 and delta x is positive because the right limit I am talking about and in this case again you have take the f 1 plus delta x and minus this f 1 divided by delta x. So, limit delta x goes to 0 and f 1 plus delta x. So, f 1 plus delta x we have computed here this is 2 and uh, minus delta x and minus f 1 is 2 again and divided by delta x. So, this limit will be coming as minus 1 because this this will get cancelled and then you will get minus 1 there. So, the right derivative is minus 1 and the left derivative f 1 minus 0 which is limit delta x goes to 0 again with delta x negative. So, in this case f 1 plus delta x will be computed from here. So, 1 plus delta x whole square plus 1 minus f 1 which is 2 divided by delta x. So, delta x goes to 0 and here you will get 1 plus delta x square and 2 delta x. So, 1 plus delta x square 2 delta x plus 1 minus 2. So, this will cancel out and then here also. So, you will get and this power. So, delta x goes to 0 this will be coming as 2. So, in this case the left derivative is 2 and the right derivative is minus 1. So, the function is not differentiable at the point 1. So, the rows theorem is not applicable in this case and if we take a look here at this plot then you can again see that at 1 uh, here the function is not differentiable which we have just seen. So, moving further this is another example which says the using rows theorem show that the equation this x power 13 plus 7 x power 3 minus 5 is equal to 0 has exactly one real root in 0 1 in the close interval 0 1. So, this is another kind of application which where we can use the Rose theorem to show that uh, this equation has exactly a one real root. So, if we move further suppose that this f x this function here x power 13 plus 7 x minus uh, 5 has more than one real root in 0 1. So, we assume that this function f x has more than one real root. So, if it has more than real root then we can take any two roots let us say alpha and beta. So, we have taken two roots and since these alpha and beta are the roots. So, f alpha will be 0 and that will be also equal to f beta. So, alpha and beta both are roots. So, the function will be 0 at alpha and as well as at beta. So, here we just for uh, the convenience we have assumed that uh, alpha is smaller than beta and naturally these two will uh, fall between 0 and 1 because 0 and 1 are is not the root of the equation which clearly we can see there. So, these alpha beta these two roots because we have assumed that this function has more than two roots. So, these alpha and beta will be between less uh, between 0 and 1. So, both have the positive number here alpha and beta and less than 1. So, what Rose theorem says if we apply the Rose theorem to, uh, to this interval alpha and beta if we apply uh, we apply this rose theorem to the interval alpha and beta in that case the rose theorem says that there will be a point f prime c will be 0 there will be a point c where f prime c will be 0 because of the reason because the function is taking now equal value at alpha and beta 
function is differentiable, it is a polynomial uh, function, there is no problem, the, it is continuous naturally and it is taking the same value at alpha and beta. So, if we apply in this interval Rho's theorem that will give us that f prime c is equal to 0 for some c in the interval alpha and beta. So, this implies, so what is this f prime c? So, f prime c is 13 c power 12 plus the 21 and c power 2 and is equal to 0 for some c in the interval alpha and beta. Again note that this alpha and beta both are positive number and now which you see because the c is positive here then this expression here 13 c power 12 plus 21 c square cannot be 0 because this is a power 12 here the even number and also c power uh, 2 and all this c is positive. So, this is a positive quantity this is a positive quantity. So, it cannot be equal to 0, but the Rho's theorem says that it will be equal to 0. That means, the our assumption which was that the function has more than 2 real roots is wrong. So, it contradicts our assumption of more than 1 real root. But now the question is whether there is a root in this case because we have just proved that there cannot be more than 2 roots. So, uh, if you take a close look at this function here at 0 the value is uh, minus 5 somewhere here and if you uh, put this 1 there the, the, the other end then we will get uh, 3. So, the value will be 3 at 1. So, if this is 1 here. So, at 1 the value is 3 and the 0 the value is minus 5 and the function is continuous. So, definitely to reach to this point it will cross somewhere the real axis and so that proves the existence of, of one root uh, in this case which, which, which confirms the existence of one root because this is uh, changing its sign. So, f 0 is minus uh, 5 and f 1 is uh, 3. Now, there are the references which were used to prepare this lecture the um, uh, book by the Puskonov differential uh, and uh, integral calculus the volume 1 and also the crazy advanced engineering mathematics. So, again the conclusion here we have studied the Rho's theorem which says that if the function is continuous and differentiable having the same value at this a and b then there will be a point c somewhere in the open interval a b where the tangent to this function will be parallel to the x axis. So, this is the Rho's theorem which is a particular case of the mean value theorem which we will discuss in the next lecture and basically this assumption of having the equal values will be removed and then we will get more general results and, as, and those are the mean value theorem uh, the topic of the next lecture. So, thank you.